Is Alabama done? Welcome back to Only Talk Sports. We talk sports every single day, or at least we try to. I'm Ross Jaffrey. Subscribe to the channel if you like sports content. Hit that notification bell so you never miss our video. We are moving right along during the college football season. We are over halfway through the season, which is kind of sad to see. College football is a lot shorter than most other sports, so we have to enjoy it while it lasts. But with that being said, we're getting closer and closer to seeing how the college football playoff picture is going to unfold. And some some teams have some make or break games coming up, which are going to determine whether they do make the playoffs or not, or which teams will end up making bowl games. So I'm going to preview and predict every single major game during week nine of the college football season and see which teams I think will win and lose. To start out on Thursday night, we got an interesting ACC matchup between Syracuse and Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's undefeated. They've been one of the surprise teams this year, along with Army and Navy, BYU, and Indiana. But they haven't had a tough schedule. They've had a lot of soft competition. Syracuse has had a couple of decent wins this year. I don't think they're a great team, though. And going on the road, Syracuse usually does a better job in the carrier dome. I don't trust Pitt, and I do think that they will slip up eventually. But I will go with Pittsburgh and a spotlight game to beat Syracuse, 28-27. to I think it will be close. They have a shot to trip up, but I do think they'll get the win. Then you got Louisville traveling to Boston College. Louisville struggling this season, and they got an interesting matchup on Friday night against the BC team that is fading fast. I think Louisville's the more talented team. BC does have some life into the program with Bill O'Brien, but they were playing better earlier in the season. Louisville's had a tough schedule, and they've lost all of their games against teams that are better than them. I think Louisville's going to end up getting this win 27-17. to If Boston College is playing like the way they were at the beginning of the season, I would go with them. But I think Louisville's desperate to get a win, and they'll get it done. Then you got Boise State at UNLV, another interesting Friday night game. UNLV trying to keep their case alive to be able to make the college football playoff. If they went out, they might have a slim chance, even though there are other teams in the group of five that have a better shot, including Boise State. They would have to knock off Boise State. And if Boise State wants to make the college football playoff, they got to win this game as well. I think Boise State's the better team, but this is a tricky road game. UNLV is a much better team now with Barry Odom at head coach. But I think Ashton Genty is going to help the Boise State Broncos go on the road and beat UNLV 31 224. Then you got Rockers at USC. What a dumpster fire of a game in the Big Ten. USC is below 500. They're playing garbage football, and Lincoln Riley's seat is hot. He's got a big buyout, though, and he should be okay for now unless USC can shill out that much money. But I think Rockers is a scrappy little team. They got a good coach in Greg Schiano, but they have been fading the last few weeks. They've lost their last three games. Make it four for me. I think USC, despite how terrible that they have been playing, and there is a shot the team taps out and doesn't even try in this game, but I do think Lincoln Riley is going to make sure that the team doesn't completely fall apart or he knows his job could be on the line. I'm going to go with USC to beat Rutgers 24 to 17. Then you got Nebraska at Ohio State. Ohio State's going to blow the doors off Nebraska. I would not even be shocked if they win by 40 or more. Give me Ohio State to beat Nebraska 45 to 14. Then you got Notre Dame at Navy. Interesting game. Notre Dame has struggled against Navy in the past. Navy is undefeated. They are playing great football. Looking at the spread, Notre Dame is favored by 13, but that might be a bit too high. I know that Notre Dame's been playing great football since the loss to Northern Illinois after beating Texas A&M in Week 1. Notre Dame should have beat Northern Illinois. There was no excuses for that loss, but they have gotten that game behind them. I think Navy's been a great story, and they have a shot to beat Notre Dame, but I think there's a better shot Arnie beats Notre Dame than Navy does. Give me Notre Dame to knock off Navy. 31 to 17. Then you got Washington and Indiana. If Curtis Rourke was playing in this game, I think Indiana would have a much better shot to win. They were favored by 10 with him playing in this game. But since Taven Jackson's having to come in, since Curtis Rourke has an injury to his finger, Indiana is only favored by six and a half. Washington, though, has not won a road game this season, including losing to Rutgers on the road. So I think that's going to be a big issue for them. Indiana is coming off an emotional high with that Nebraska win. So there is a chance for a letdown. But with Kurt Signetti leading the team, I think Indiana. Indiana will be just fine. Give me the Hoosers to beat Washington 28 to 17. Then I think Ole Miss is going to easily beat Oklahoma. I know Ole Miss has a couple of losses, and they've kind of disappointed so far this season, but Oklahoma's playing terrible football. Give me Ole Miss to knock off the Sooners 35 to 17. Then you got Georgia Tech and Virginia Tech. Interesting little ACC game. Georgia Tech's not a bad team. I think that Virginia Tech, though, being at home, I know it's not at night where their crowd is better, but I still think Virginia Tech is still a better team than Georgia Tech, especially with Haynes King being injured. Give me Virginia Tech 
to knock off Georgia Tech 31 to 21. Then you got North Carolina at Virginia on the CW. What a dumpster fire of a game. North Carolina with Mac Brown. Looks like he might end up retiring at the end of the season because it's been a mess for North Carolina this year. Yes, they have the injury to Max Johnson, but still, they should be playing better than this. Give me Virginia to beat North Carolina 28 to 24. Then to move on to the 330 games, you got Illinois at Oregon. I know this is a top 20 matchup, and Illinois has been scrappy this season, and if they do win this game, they will have a shot to make the college football playoff, but I think Oregon's been on a roll. They've been playing great football. They beat Ohio State, and then they did not even have the letdown against Purdue. I think Oregon, with them being at home, should be able to knock off Illinois 38 to 21. Then you got BYU at UCF, an underrated game in the Big 12. BYU undefeated, one of those surprise teams. And UCF, they can play spoiler. They almost knocked off Iowa State last week when Iowa State was undefeated. We know that UCF can knock off big teams when they are an underdog. I'm going to go with UCF, surprisingly, to beat BYU 38-35. Maybe I'm nuts, maybe I'm crazy, but UCF has done it before as an underdog. I think they get a big upset win and ruin BYU's perfect season. Then you got Missouri at Alabama. Alabama is playing terribly right now for their standards. They got a couple losses, and people are coming for Kalen DeBoer's head. You can say it's too premature, but this is Alabama, a program that wants to win national championships. The thing that helps Bama, though, is Missouri's quarterback, Brady Cook, looks like he's going to be injured for the game. It does not look like he's going to play. It is at Alabama. I think since Brady Cook is out and Missouri hasn't looked all that great this season, give me Alabama to knock off Missouri 38-28. to But This game isn't going to solve all the issues that Alabama is going to have and people are still going to be a little bit curious to see if Bama can turn it around. Then you got Northwestern and Iowa. Iowa's not playing very well, but neither is Northwestern. I think Northwestern is an okay team and Iowa's a little bit better, especially on offense, surprisingly this season. Iowa and Northwestern have comparable defenses, but Iowa's offense is better than Northwestern's. Give me the Hawkeyes to beat Northwestern 31 to 20. Then you got Minnesota and Maryland, another interesting game in the Big Ten. Both these teams have really been struggling. Maryland just got a big one over USC, though. That might help propel them in this game, but Minnesota is at home, so I'm going to go with the Golden Gophers to knock off Maryland 24 to 21. Minnesota isn't a great team, but they are a tough team to beat at home. Then to move on to the Big 12 during the 3.30 slate, you got Oklahoma State at Baylor. Both these teams have really been struggling, but Oklahoma State's actually been playing pretty awful football this season, and I think that Baylor's desperate with Dave Aranda to turn their season around. Give me the Bears to knock off Oklahoma State 28-27. to Then you got Texas Tech at TCU. Both these teams have been struggling. The bottom of the Big 12 was very interesting. A log jam of teams vying for bowl eligibility. None of them playing all that well. Texas Tech just lost to Baylor last week. They could be really mad coming into this game, but I think TCU is going to beat Texas Tech 31-27. I don't trust either team, but I think TCU will get the win. Then you got Texas at Vanderbilt. I know some people are saying Vandy's going to knock off Texas just like they did against Alabama, but Texas coming off a loss to Georgia, I think they're going to be angry. They can't sleepwalk, though. They can't take Vanderbilt for granted. I don't think they will, especially because they have a ranking next to their name. I think Texas is going to come back hungry. They're going to knock off Vanderbilt 38-21, to but Vanderbilt's going to keep it interesting at least for a half. Then you got the night games, Florida State and Miami. It's hate week for the Hurricanes. Miami and Florida State, they don't like each other, but Florida State's playing anemic football. I don't even think a buy really going to help them coming into this game. Give me Miami to knock off Florida State 38-20, to but it would be such a Miami thing to do to blow this game against the Seminoles, but I don't think they will. Then you got West Virginia and Arizona. Neil Brown, he's in big trouble. His job is on the line. He needs a big win, but he has not been able to get big wins this season. This game's on the road. Really, though, that might help West Virginia. Virginia because they've really been struggling at home, but I still think that Arizona has been playing better up to this point. Give me the Wildcats to beat the Mountaineers 34 to 24. Then you got Utah at Houston. Houston's a rough team, but Utah's been terrible on offense, and they just lost to TCU. I think that Utah will bounce back, though. Kyle Whittingham is a good enough coach, and Houston's a bad enough team. I think Utah wins 21-17, but it won't be by much because they've really been struggling this season. Then you got Penn State at Wisconsin. Wisconsin, not a great team this year, but they are starting to turn it around. They're playing better football. looks like Luke Fickle is starting to get the Badgers to figure it out a little bit. It's a night game. Camp Randall's a tough place to play. Penn State. Not all that great of a team. Give me the Badgers to knock off Penn State, 31-27. I could be wrong, but Penn State usually chokes in one game during the season. I know they've been kind of consistent lately, but I don't know. Something tells me Penn State's going to drop this game 
Give me Wisconsin. Then you got LSU at Texas A&M. Texas A&M's at home, night game. It is tough to win in Kyle Field. LSU's been really solid this season, but I still think they are maybe a bit overrated now that they have started to play better since that loss to USC. You can't overlook that. I know it was in week one, but A&M has been playing really good football lately, especially at home. Give me Texas A&M to keep it rolling and knock off LSU 31-27 to at Kyle Field at night. Then you got Michigan State and Michigan. Coming into the season, easily would have picked Michigan in this game. And I know it's in the big house, and I know it's at night, and that atmosphere is going to be tough. And Michigan State's not a great team, but I don't know, man. Michigan's playing awful football with Jack Tuttle at quarterback. They have no life. Their run game's still decent, but really their offense is pretty horrible, and their defense hasn't even been playing as well lately. I don't know. I'm going to go with Michigan State to knock off Michigan 28-24. I could be crazy picking the Spartans, but I think Michigan State's going to knock off Michigan in the big house. Then you got Auburn at Kentucky. Auburn's been playing horrible. So is Kentucky, but Auburn usually only shows up in big games. This is not a big game. So I think Kentucky's going to bounce back and beat Auburn 21 to 20. Then you got K State at home against Kansas. Yes, this is a robbery game. Kansas with Lance Leopold, head coach, he's definitely turned around the program. But Kansas is having a rough year. I think Kansas State, especially at home where they play a lot better, Avery Johnson's going to be able to lead them to a 38 17 win. Then you got SMU at Duke. Not a bad game. Duke, though, still a little bit of an overrated team, in my opinion, even though they're at 6-1. and one. Haven't really played anybody. SMU's been a really good team this season. Got a good win over Louisville under their belt. I think that SMU's going to go on the road and beat Duke. 31 to 24. Duke doesn't have the best atmosphere. They don't have the greatest team in the world. I think SMU gets the win. And then in the final game of the night, you got Cincinnati at Colorado. Cincinnati's been underrated. Brendan Sorsby, the transfer quarterback from Indiana, has been helping Cincinnati get some wins this year. I think Satterfield is a very overrated coach, but Cincinnati, you got to give them credit where credit's due. They are competing in a rough and tumble Big 12 with a lot of teams that are very average, and they've been getting some wins. But it's at Colorado, and even though I have trashed Colorado for the last couple years with Deion Sanders at head coach for poor play. I think Deion Sanders is finally getting it figured out at the Buffaloes. They're playing better football. I know they got some injuries on their team, but I think that Colorado is going to achieve bowl eligibility and knock off Cincinnati 31 to 24 in what should be a decent Big 12 after dark game. But those are my thoughts on every single week nine game of the college football season. A lot of interesting games, not a lot of headline matchups, but definitely matchups that are going to impact the college football playoff race. It's going to be really interesting to see what happens, but let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below about every single one of my week nine picks for all these college football games and which teams you think will win or lose subscribe to the channel if you like sports content like this video down below follow me on twitter as well link is in the description and i'll see you next time